welcome back students. For today's lecture, we will be discussing about module 6 about the Trichinella spiralis. A few reminders before we start and before you watch this presentation, number one, of course, please do take down notes. A soft copy of the presentation has been added to your smart kit already. Second, listen attentively, avoid unnecessary distractions. And third, of course, give extra attention to info marked with a star because it is a recall question in the board exam. Here are our learning objectives for today. Of course, number one, we will be discussing about the morphology as well as the life cycle, the infective and diagnostic stages, disease associated, modes of transmission, prevention and control, as well as the treatment and the diagnostic test for trichinella spiralis. And of course, don't forget ha, dapat kabisado natin again ang scientific and common names of our nematode. So, so far, tapos na tayo sa Ascaris, which is otherwise known as the giant intestinal roundworm. We also discussed about Enterobius vermicularis, which is the pinworm or the sitworm. At ito pa nga po yung mga other names niya. We also have discussed about Trichuris trichura, which is a recall question in the board exam. And then again, the Trichuris trichura is otherwise known as the whip worm. Kasi di ba ako maaalala yung morphology ng ating trichuris trichura whip-like yung structure ng kanilang mga adults. That's why ang common name niya pinangalanan siyang whip worm. We have also discussed already about the Capillaria philippinensis, also known as the Pudok or the Mystery Worm. Ayan, di ba? Nagkaroon pa nga tayo ng story about this. Bakit Mystery Worm ang pangalan niya? We have also discussed our hookworms, such as the Necator americanus, otherwise known as the New World Hookworm, parehas letter N. We have also discussed about Ancylostoma duodenale, which is the Old World Hookworm. We have also discussed the two Ancylostoma species, which is the cat and dog hookworms, and also Strongyloides turcoralis, which is the threadworm and then the military worm. So, for today, we will be discussing about, again, Trichinella spiralis, otherwise known as the muscle worm or the garbage worm. I repeat, Trichinella spiralis, this is the scientific name. The common name of this parasite is the muscle worm or the garbage worm. Mamaya, de discuss natin bakit ito ang kanyang mga common names. And of course, dapat kabisado natin ang infective stages sa mga humans. I repeat ha, this is the infective stages of the following parasites in humans po, okay? Pwede kasing itanong sa inyo ano ang infective stage sa mga intermediate host natin. But kapag ang tinanong sa inyo, ano lang, very precise, what is the infective stage of this parasite, blah, blah, blah. Ito po yung isasagot natin because pag ganun kasi yung tanong, uh, Direct to the point, what is the infective stage? Madalas doon ang tinatanong talaga is yung infective stage sa humans. Okay? Kapag naman ang tinanong again sa inyo, infective stage of this parasite in an intermediate host. Pwede pong mag-iba. Pwedeng hindi ito. But kung ang tanong lang sa inyo again, infective stage of this parasite, pwede rin naman nating specify doon, infective stage of this parasite in humans. Ito po yung mga isasagot natin. So, so far, tapos na rin tayo, di ba, kay embryonated egg, which is the infective stage of the Ascaris, Trichuris, and Enterobius. We are also done discussing about the L3 larva or the filariform larva, infective stage of our hookworm, Strongyloides, and Capillaria. So, right now, nandito po tayo sa... Insisted larva, which is the infective stage of our Trichinella spiralis. I repeat, the infective stage of Trichinella spiralis, I see insisted larva. Okay, Trichinella spiralis. Again, the common name of this parasite is known as the muscle worm, garbage worm, and the pork worm. Disease associated with this parasite, we have trichinosis. Doon nga, kinuha yun sa trichinella, trichinosis, and myalgia or muscle pain. Because ang um, reason for this doon sa myalgia or muscle pain ng trichinella spiralis is because this parasite actually is capable of insisting in our muscles. So, imagine ang isang parasite nandun sa muscles natin mismo, sa laman natin. And of course, yung laman natin may mga nerve endings dyan. At kapag merong uh, parasite doon, pwede niyang matamaan yung mga nerve ends, endings natin. That's why it causes muscle pain. Then, mode of transmission of this parasite is through the ingestion of infected meat. 
Okay, so as mentioned earlier, di ba nga ang ating trichinella spiralis, na insist po kasi yan sa muscles natin. Okay, nandun siya sa muscles nyo. That's why a mode of transmission yan ngayon is through ingestion of infected meat or yung muscle. Di ba yung meat is yung muscle ng ating mga pork or bears. So, once na na-ingest nyo ang infected meat, uh, particularly infected with encysted larva, that's the time na pwedeng magkaroon ng infection ng trichinella spiralis ang isang tao. And also, again, the infective stage of this parasite, don't forget, is encysted larva in meat po. Okay, I repeat, infective stage of trichinella spiralis is encysted larva in meat, meat muscle. Diagnostic stage naman ng parasite na ito is also the encysted larva. Kasi kung saan siya matatagpuan, di ba nasa muscle siya or sa meats natin. Doon din natin matatagpuan yung ating diagnostic stage. Wherein this encysted larva can actually be diagnosed through muscle biopsy stained with eosin. Yung eosin po is a type of stain, okay? Pangkulay po yan. Stain po yung eosin na yan. Again, diagnostic stage of this trichinella spiralis encysted larva and it can be diagnosed through muscle biopsy. So, ang gagawin kasi dyan, uh, for example, you are suspected that you are infected with trichinella spiralis. Kukuha ng uh, muscle sample, as in kukuha ng parang tissue sa'yo, sa skin mo or kung saan man, basta sa muscle. So, muscle biopsy, i-stain po yun again with eosin. Eosin pang stain yan, parang kulay orange yan, ganun yung itsura niya. And then once na na-stain natin yung muscle biopsy, we will now be looking at the muscle biopsy under the microscope to check for the presence of encysted larva. At uh, basically, ganito po ang itsura niyan under the microscope. Okay? So ayan, di ba, nagkaroon ng larva dyan. This is an encysted larva which can be seen under the microscope. And don't forget, this muscle biopsy which is the gold standard test for trichinella spiralis has been a recall question in the board exam before. I repeat, what is the diagnostic test, the gold standard test for trichinella spiralis infection that is through muscle biopsy? Okay, note. Adult of this trichinella spiralis is in the small intestine. Ito na mention ko na to sa inyo before. I can clearly remember specifying this one. Pag tinanong po sa inyo, where do you find the adults? Adults ha, adults of the trichinella spiralis that is in the small intestine po. Okay? Kung natatandaan niyo yung ash CT Yan, di ba? Sa mga small intestine. That is the adults. However po, pag tinanong sa inyo is the larva, specifically the encysted larva, yan na nga, di ba? Encysted larva, it can be found in the muscles. Okay, walang mali dito doon ha. Again, I repeat, adults of the trichinella spiralis resides in the small intestine while the larva is can be found in the muscle po. Okay, magkaiba di ba si larva at si adults? Okay, so here is the life cycle of our trichinella spiralis. So, meron siyang domestic cycle. Domestic cycle is mainly through the mga pigs po. This is meat scraps and cannibalism as well. So, pwede kasi yung mangyari sa mga pigs natin. So, yung mga pigs natin can actually harbor the encysted larva of trichinella spiralis. At kapag ito pong pork na ito or yung pig natin, di ba, kasi kumakain tayo ng meat ng ating mga baboy, tapos hindi na iluto ng maayos, which is through the ingestion of the undercooked meat, like hindi masyadong nailuto ng maayos eh. Kunwari steak. Diba yung mga steak natin minsan, parang pinapadaanan lang siya sa grill. Tapos hindi siya all the way na cook siya, thoroughly. Hindi ganon. So, once you ingested an undercooked meat that is infected with trichinella spiralis, insisted larva, makain mo yan. Ayan, papasok na yan sa katawan mo. And then, next nyan, kakainin mo yan. Second stage yan, the larva will be released in the small intestine. So, yan, kakain yan, papunta dito. Tapos, once inside the small intestine, it can become adults. Diba? Then, yung adults natin, may male and female. Si male and female ngayon, magme-mate yan, magkakaroon sila ng mga baby na worm. Magkakaroon na naman ng larva, which will be deposited in your mucosa. 
and then once inside the mucosa, it will be pushed through into the circulation, blood circulation po ito, hanggang sa ma-reach niya po yung striated muscles natin, wherein the larva will now be encysted in the muscle. Okay? Then, aside from the domestic cycle, we also have the sylvatic cycle, which is through predation and scavenging. Specifically, ang sylvatic cycle happens in bears. So, dito naman sa Philippines, no, hindi naman commonly na kumakain tayo ng meat ng bears. Kasi halos wala namang matatagbo ang bear dito sa Pilipinas. So, commonly talaga, di ba, pork. So, itong mga bears na ito, siguro common to sa ibang bansa, wherein uh, talagang normal doon na kumakain sila ng bear meats. But here in the Philippines, this is not very common. So, in the sylvatic cycle, ayan, through predation again and scavenging, these bears can actually harbor the encysted larva which can be found in their striated muscle. At itong bear, for example, kinain natin, tapos undercooked siya, eh meron pala siyang encysted larva, ganun na naman yung life cycle niya. Okay, so also, by the way, hindi naman common siguro kung nare may isang taong uh, infected with the trichinella spiralis. It's not very common naman na magkaroon ng transmission ng human to humans kasi we are not cannibals. Okay, we are not commonly cannibals. Hindi naman natin kinakain, di ba, yung kapwa natin tao. So, it's not very, very rare or halos walang cases ng gano'n, ng human-to-human -human transmission. Because then again, the mode of transmission of this parasite is through the ingestion of infected meat po. At tayo namang mga humans, we are not cannibals uh, normally. So, the disease is commonly divided into three phases, corresponding to the periods of number one, incubation and intestinal invasion. Is symptoms includes diarrhea, constipation, vomiting, abdominal cramps, malaise, and nausea. Second stage is the larval migration and muscle invasion. So basically, dito po sa unang part na ito, dun sa incubation, hanggang dito lang yan. Ayan, hanggang sa ma-reach na lang yung ating mga intestine. The second stage is the larval migration and the muscle invasion. Nandun doon tayo dito sa may papuntang circulation, papunta sa muscle. The typical signs and symptoms are fever, facial edema, na mamaga daw po yung muka, urticaria, pain and swelling and weakness. And in severe cases, there may be splenomegaly, gastric, and intestinal hemorrhages. And... Third stage of this disease is through encystment and encapsulation. This is the convalescent stage wherein fever, weakness, pain, and other symptoms start to disappear. Full recovery is expected since trichinosis is a self-limiting disease naman. Laboratory diagnosis of this parasite, again, number one is the gold standard test, which is through muscle biopsy using eucine as the stain. We can also try to check for this parasite through vaccine diagnosis wherein we are using actually an albino rats. Ang gagawin po dito, ito, uh, there is something na uh, mali dito with regards to ethics. Okay? Kasi po, kay vaccine diagnosis, ang gagawin dito is, yung mga albino rats natin, yung mga laboratory rats, pakakainin natin sila ng suspected meat na, or suspected na tao na merong trekinella spiralis. Tapos, i-check natin yung muscle ngayon ng ating mga albino rats kung sila po ay mahahawa. Okay? So, ako personally, hindi yun uh, align sa morals ni ma'am. So, dito na tayo sa muscle biopsy. But, Etong vaccine diagnosis naman to, this is very rarely done na. Kasi nga po, there is a usage pa ng albino rats dito eh, para malaman kung infected ang isang tao. So, hindi na to ganun kaganda. Mas matagal yung duration niya at yun nga may problem siya with regards to ethics and moral issues. So, muscle biopsy na lang talaga tayo. Also, we can try to check for chemistry test as well as serological tests such as the bentonite flocculation and intradermal test, which is known as Bachman. And confirmatory test for this parasite is western blot and latex agglutination. Itong western blot at latex agglutination, this can be under serology as well. Treatment is thiabendazole may be given in the first week of infection to expel the adult worm from the gastrointestinal tract. Mebendazole is also effective when given at a 20 mg per kilogram body weight 6, uh, six hours for 10 to 14 days. 
then patients with symptomatic tachinosis should be confined to bed and given general supportive treatment lang. Kasi self-limiting lang naman po itong disease na ito. Prevention and control. The general public should be continuously informed through educational campaigns regarding pork and bear transmission because as mentioned earlier, di ba yung life cycle nila actually involves the pork and yung bears natin. Once ingested nga, di ba yun yung kanyang pinaka mode of transmission. It is recommended that meat be cooked at 77 degrees Celsius or 177 degrees Fahrenheit. Dapat po ha, Maayos na maayos po yung pag-cook ng mga meats natin, lalo na yung pork. Dito sa Philippines, commonly pork talaga, di ba? Kasi almost everyday nga, yun yung ulam nyo. Kaya dapat po talaga ang ating mga meat should be thoroughly cooked. Yung mga may hilig sa steak ha, ayan. Yung steak kasi natin, di ba, mas masarap naman, totoo naman, mas masarap siya kapag medium rare. But pag medium rare kasi, there is a tendency, of course, na hindi pa yun fully cooked all the way. At uh, pwedeng nagka-harbor yung meat na yon ng trichinella, pwede tayo mahawa. And also, freezing is another way to kill the larvae. Storage at negative 15 degrees Celsius for 20 days or negative 30 degrees Celsius for 6 days is effective po in killing this trichinella spiralis. Then also, smoking, salting, or drying of meat are not effective po against trichinella spiralis. So, hindi daw effective yung smoking, salting, tsaka yung mga drying techniques ng meats natin. Pwede pa rin mabuhay ang mga insisted larva na yan. Okay, if you have any questions or clarifications, you may contact me through this email as well as in Messenger.